Don't forget to subscribe! Welcome back to our review series of the Team Smash Christmas Specials. In this video, we'll be reviewing My Hero Academia, Episode 101, Merry Christmas. Let's get this thing started! Ah, spoiler alert! In Deka City, cracks from an unknown source start spreading and destroying the area. Not long after, the city collapses into ruin and is engulfed in dust. In the center of the city stands Tomoda Shir Shigaraki, who is bruised, bloodied, and whose hair is now changed from light blue to a ghostly white. Tomoda simply smiles and maniacally laughs. And some time later, Kotsky and Shoto are being interviewed in their dorms after their takedown of the group of villains. The reporter asks if they get along, leading Shoto to mention they're just friends, and causing Kotsky to erupt in annoyance that he argues with everything he says. Nearing the end of December, Class 1A react to Shoto and Kotsky's interviews, with Hanta and Denki laughing at the fact that Kotsky's part was removed from it, to his further irritation. At the same time, Izuku is watching a news broadcast which mentions the tragedy in Deka City that occurred nine days ago. They talk about just how 20 people drove to the city to destruction in about 50 minutes, believing this is a ploy on the villains to lower the public's trust in heroes. Tenya comments on how the destruction was seemingly worse than in Camino, with, however, with fewer casualties. The broadcast proceeds to interview several civilians, who comment on giving the heroes some sh slack and, wait, and wanting them to do their best. Their hero critic, Aureo... Kurai Shisu discusses how in the past, an incident like this wouldn't result in all heroes being blamed. But now they're at a point in time when criticism is turning into encouragement. So Ochaka and Mia mention how this is thanks to the Luxi boy who helped people to encourage Endeavor who's been working hard. So Midnight and Mount Lady enter the room. Declaring the students that while heroes have always been about showbiz, now people want to see heroes in the real sense of the word. Eraserhead appears to tell the students that they've started getting more exposure. So they ask the two to talk about them in the process. So after Minetta points out how Mount Lady is the most showbiz of all of them here, she tells them she will inform them how a hero should behave. Much to Ejiro's excitement. The class is revealed to be hero interview training allowing the students to practice presenting themselves in front of the media. Shadow starts off as Mount Lady asks some questions, to his slight confusion. He tells her he wants to be a hero that can make everyone feel safe, and then... misunderstanding when she says the answer that made her heart race. So he proceeds to show off his ultimate move, heaven-piercing ice wall, as well as mentioning his flash freeze heat wave. The other classmates bring up Endeavor's flash fire fists he utilized in the battle against Class 1B. However, he mentions he's not at that level yet. Mount Lady concludes, saying he should try to smile and that he'll slay the ladies with it, which he once again misunderstands. As some of the students question showing off their moves, Mount Lady explains that how since not everyone knows who they are. Their ultimate moves are an expression of themselves and lets people know what you can do. She continues that these are all important in team-ups warning villains and helping others feel safe. Minoru is surprised by her change in attitude as Eraserhead notes that all the heroes have started making moves to improve themselves. Thanks to Endeavor's presence as a new number one hero. So Mount Lady continues through each of the students as Tenya, Momo, Ochako, Rumikage, Ejiro, Mina, Denki, and more of them all introduce themselves to her delight. Kotsky then takes on his turn, leading Mount Lady to comment that he's not as bad as 
an interview by himself and just doesn't gel well with the rest of humanity. Shoto apologizes for getting in the way in the previous interviews, resulting him arguing once more. Midnight suggests he should just avoid the media like Eraserhead, but he believes he should learn from someone else. Izuka takes the stage next, completely anxious and unable to answer properly. Eijido comments how he's hardened like his quirk, and Suya mentions how nervous he is in these situations, so Mount Lady brings up how most of his moves are based on all might. Breaking him out of his bunk and started to endlessly mutter ho over how his moves were inspired by him. So? Midnight asks about his quirk going out of control the other day, wondering if he's made any progress. So Izuku proceeds to think about how in the past two weeks since Black Rick emerged, he's been practicing visualizing it every day, and imagines a locked door through which the quirk is behind. Just like how he was able to master the percentages of one for all. He prepares to re-emerge Black Whip. To everyone's anticipation, for only a tiny wisp of the Black Whip to appear. While Izuka is happy about this development, everybody else is completely dumbfounded. Meanwhile, Nezu goes to visit All Might, for who has been hard at work creating a notebook containing information on the quirks of the past wi wielders of One for All. So Nezu then informs All Might that they will be restarting the hero work study soon. Much to his surprise. The UA staff discussed the sudden decision from the Hero Public Safety Communication Commission to start out the work studies again, requesting all the Hero Corps students to get more training. So Midnight suggests that this is their way of informing them that they are short-handed, even when they are already saturated with heroes. Ecopla Ectoplasm believes that it has something to do with what happened in Deka City. We're snide adding that the League of Villains must be involved too. Nezu tells them that since they are being so vague, they must have learned something they are trying to keep a secret. He tells the teachers that it's important for the heroes to prepare for anything and, try and to inform their students before turning to Eraserhead to mention the Commission's other program. By the end of the month, Nezu calls All Might, who has been busy researching for now Massa, to tell him that after the four months since the dormitory system has been installed, there has been no suspicious activity, meaning none of the students are probably spies for the League of Villains. To All Might's relief, Nezu then asks if he will be coming back the day, leading him to ask if anything happened to Izuku, and Nezu reminds him what day it is. So all of Class 1A celebrates Christmas with a giant feast in their dorm common room. When the topic of the work studies comes up, Kyoka asks Ochako and Suyu if they will be returning to Ryukyu's agency, which they say yes. Tenya asks Izuku if he will be going back to the Night Eye agency, with Eijiro mentioning how Centipeter has taken over. However, Izuku tells him that he can't due to how much work they have to do so they won't take the time him to take on anybody. He adds that since Gran Torino is busy too, he's stuck in limbo so they will have to wait to be assigned someone since his work study is mandatory. Eijiro asks Katsuki if he will be going back to Best Genus. However, after he remembers reading about him supposedly going missing, he just says he hasn't decided yet and he then thinks back to his time during their internship, when Best Genus questioned about the la his lack of a hero name, with Kotsky barking back that they were all rejected. After calling them all childish, he tells them that a hero name demonstrates how you want to be or how you should be, and that once he gets his provisional license, he wants to see him again and tell him his name. Ejido brings up how thanks to all of his offers from the sports festival, he could go with anyone, but Kotsky isn't interested in learning any of them. So Mineta complains for all of them talking about school stuff, and Nikito arrives with more food, and Eraserhead surrenders accompanied by me in the Santa outfit. To the classmates' delight, and I proceed to get into the holiday co I proceed to get several of the holiday customs customs mixed up. So he informs to them that Mirio is with the class and. And he told me to go have fun, and I go with the girls. Izuka notices that my horn has gotten bigger, with Eraserhead telling him that I've taken what he told me to heart, to his happiness. 
to class 1A, including myself. Proceed to enjoy the feast and have lots of fun. And we ended with a gift exchange, putting their presents in a pile and choosing one at random. So Izuka gets a chocolate gift and a sticky cut mocha. And she gets this gift in, of an All Might keychain. And I get Fumikage's Buster Sword. And Izuka thinks about how even though their future is uncertain, he hopes they can have all much fun the next Christmas. And later that night, as all the students are cleaning up, Shoto approaches Izuku and Katsuki, asking them if they'd like to accompany him for their work study with Endivore, thus ending the 101st episode and the Christmas special. Did you know that? This is the first time the anime has adapted it arc in a different order, adapting possibly the Endivore Agency arc before the Meta Liberation Army arc. This is common to Eraserhead about the Commission's other program directly leads into the events of My Hero Academia Heroes Rising! Now you know! So we all give My Hero Academy's Christmas special a 6 out of 5. It was a pretty fun special, and it was a pretty fantastic one to celebrate the holiday season. We give this special's rating a peak 11 out of 10. Next time... I will do something not nice! Thank you so much for watching, everyone. What do you think? If you appreciated it, please be sure to subscribe to that like button, and be sure to follow my social media platforms in the description below, and the Team Life Flights Band Up channel. Please be sure to leave a comment below, and give us your open-minded thoughts. We here at Team Life Flights Fan Dubs do not condone harassment, violence, or trolls allowed, or otherwise the Red Hulk and Tony Central's The Red and Stimpy Show will haunt you down to the ends of the Shadow Realm. So please be sure to subscribe to our channels and click the notification bell. You'll never miss this video the second it goes live on YouTube and Google. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Happy Holidays and have a Happy New Year and best wishes for all. Thank you.